The rising didn't go off as planned, but we can still learn a lot from the rising and from its leader, its organizer, Denmark Vesey. Welcome to Escaping the Echo Chamber. Happy African History Month. Thank you for checking out the channel. Thank you for checking out today's episode. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Let's talk about Denmark Vesey. He was born into slavery in St. Thomas in... Yes, he was born into slavery into Saint, in St. Thomas. Uh, he later was uh, sold to a slaver, a, a she, sea captain, who in turn sold him to uh, slavers in St. Domingue, which is now ha Haiti. The conditions there were horrible, harsh, and unfortunately for him, uh, he was actually started suffering from seizures, which led to them refunding him to the, the sea captain. And yeah, it's really horrible to talk about a human being in terms of being refunded. But what's interesting is that he didn't have any epileptic seizures for the rest of his life, yeah. which would indicate that he was very smart and he was shrewd enough to get himself out of a very horrible situation uh, uh, to a less horrible situation because of how horrid and how uh, just brutal the conditions that slaves were being kept in into in what was what is now Haiti. So his captain, the, the captain who, who purchased him, uh, wound up moving and settling in South Carolina. At some point, he managed to win a lottery and buy his freedom. Once he bought his freedom, he started a, a carpentry business and he, his business started to grow. He got married to a slave woman who he tried to buy, purchase from her owner. Unfortunately, the owner wouldn't sell her. So that meant that their kids would be born into slavery. Later, he started a church. He co-founded a church, the AME branch in South Carolina. And it was an independent black church. But what was really interesting is the access it gave him. Because despite the fact that he was a free man, he continued to associate and socialize with slaves. And through his church, he now had the opportunity to spend a lot of time with, with slaves and to encourage them, to, to teach them. In fact, one of the things that uh, some of the, the people in the town were worried about was that he was, be, was teaching them to read. But he used he used his position, his ability to to help, you know, and eventually he began teaching them something that was even better than reading. He began organizing. He used his access and the fact that, you know, these religious meetings existed that to have access to so many uh, slaves that he could now start organizing them and planning a revolt. He used his church and he also used other churches that, uh, that, that were around to contact and just to de develop and build a network. And what he used this network to do was to get in touch with other slaves they knew, family members. So slaves he di had direct contact were able to contact, you know, uh, reach out to their family members who may not have been in his church, and he was able to develop an army. Now, what's, I mean, it, it's really interesting how, how much he was able, how much of a following he was able to, to develop. But there was a drawback. The drawback is the more people you have, the, more, the bigger your army, the more people know, the greater the risk is of somebody finding out who's not supposed to find out. But his original plan was, okay, they were going to attack the, the armory, the arsenal, and get the weapons, uh, kill white slave owners, 
liberate their slaves and then capture the the docks and some ships so that they can travel to Haiti because at this point Haiti was free the Haitian Revolution had already happened and it was a place they can go to be free of course his he was worried about the the large numbers of people that knew and he although he originally had a date of July 14th for the rising to occur he changed the date he moved it up because he was like hey I don't want somebody to get cold feet I don't want this this thing to get ratted out his fears were well founded one slave that you know had already originally planned to go along with it and told somebody else this slave decided no we're not gonna do this we want no involvement and we have to tell we have to tell the slave owners so the slave that was originally planning to go along with it agreed told his master and the rising was foiled the revolt was stopped it was it was the the white militia members formed up and then started seeking out they started patrolling and seeking out anybody who was a leader an organizer and a participant in this scheme um, and Denmark Vesey was found and murdered it's he put himself at risk but I mean what's really interesting and and, uh, and and I don't think I mentioned it, but he wasn't the only free black man involved. There were other free blacks that also uh, were involved in trying to help free, you know, black black people who who were suffering under this this these abhorrent conditions. And that was that's definitely a lesson. And today, I mean, just take a look at it. I mean. Are people, do we have leaders that are willing to, who've achieved something and are willing to risk that in order to help those who haven't? I mean, do we have leaders who have gotten into a position of fame, of, you know, built fortunes that are willing to say, hey, I'm willing to lose this to help my brothers and sisters? Who are who are still behind who are still suffering who haven't made it yet i'm asking you at this point i'm not going to make a judgment <laughs> i'm not going to offer my opinion i'm going to ask the question i'm going to leave the question for you to think about because that's what we should be demanding of our leaders like if it if, if the leaders aren't willing to put themselves at risk if they're like if, if if our leaders today are of the mindset that, oh no, I, I, I don't want to lose this. Let's just take a look at somebody like a Denmark Vesey who was free and was willing to lose his life to free others. I mean, but we, we're seeing, if we look through the historical record, we'll see so many black people that were willing to lose their lives for their people. And we may have some leaders, or more than just some, who aren't willing to lose a contract, aren't willing to lose a job <laughs> to improve the conditions of the black community. Something we need to think about, something we need to look at, but it's even bigger than that. It's even more important than that, than that because the question is, how did the plot fail? The plot failed because there were two slaves, two men who were in these conditions, two men who were suffering, who would rather stay in that condition, would rather continue to deal with abhorrent and, and, and brutal conditions and brutal circumstances than change them and change them for themselves and change them for others they were willing to stay they were willing to cope and they may have been wanting to get some kind of rewards 
for selling out so many others. There are people like that today. We cannot fool ourselves that there are people who do not want change. There are people who are comfortable, regardless of how how beneficial or how good, good the situations are, they are comfortable in whatever kind of oppressive systems or situations they're in they are comfortable they do not want the situations to change and they will turn on anybody trying to free them this is a lesson to that helps me to realize something it's a phrase it's a, it's a phrase we, no doubt you've heard all skin folk ain't kin folk yeah you gotta remember that not everybody's gonna make it in terms of not everybody's going to move forward not everyone is going to support being built up there's some people that don't want to be built up so while we're fighting to improve the situations of the black community there's some people who are cool there's some people who will actively try to interfere with any attempts to improve the black community and some of those people will be black we gotta remember that history is teaching us so many lessons we gotta remember them thank you for checking out this episode of escaping the echo chamber as always don't forget to give me a thumbs up like share and subscribe comment below what do you think do you think our current leaders are Denmark Vestis? Or are they something else? <laughs> I'll see you next time.